Okay, so this is our uh, this is our new insert. It's got a positive chip breaker, a little bit different grade. Kenna Metal KCP10 instead of the 40. So it's gonna have better edge wear, uh, not quite as much toughness, but I should be okay without that extra toughness just because we're not doing any interruptions. Lowered the spindle speed per a few recommendations on the channel and have the feed rate bumped up to 21, yeah, 21 per revolution. So we'll go for 400 off the diameter. So that is 200 per side. And we'll lock the cross side still. I think everything else is as good as it's gonna get. Well, broke a few chips. So yeah, we'll go up to the next uh, feed rate. Yeah, and I think, um, so that's kind of a bummer. The uh, tool post is still twisting, despite cranking on it very hard. Um, actually seems worse than it did before, <laughs> even with the lower speed. Maybe, well, we can't do that. Uh-oh. So we're back here, ready to go, just about. Um, I wanted to point out a few things. I've gotten, gotten a lot of comments about the uh, compound being in the wrong orientation. And there's obviously better ways to do it and worse ways to do it, but I am limited because of the position of the tailstock. So if I want to use the tailstock live center, I have to have the compound swung around like this. If it was a much bigger piece of material, that wouldn't be a problem. But uh, I don't want to have the tool hanging out at its maximum um, and in order to prevent that, basically, I have to have the compound like this. At a slight angle is also possible, but I just left it like this. And the other thing is, I think the root cause of our failures, although they uh, may be more than one reason, um, one of the reasons is the uh, tool post stud and nut were coming apart. So they had stretched apart, or uh, had stretched so that they no longer held tight. And so every time I was reefing on that nut to try and get it to tighten, it was actually making it a little bit looser and a little bit looser. And so that's why it was getting so dramatic with how much the uh, tool was digging into the material. So got that addressed, I think. Uh, we'll give it another shot and see if it's better. If it's worse, then we'll see that too. Um, but uh, I think we are ready to go. This is a piece of 4140 uh, eBay steel. So again, I'm kind of rolling my uh, rolling the dice here, but steel is expensive and just for messing around, I can't really justify spending 120 bucks on a piece of material just to turn into chips. So anyway, I'll get you guys in a safe position and start up the lathe and then we will try and make some big chips. Okay, that is 200 thousandths on the dial, so 400 off the diameter. Our speed is 227 and our feed rate is 21 thousandths. So kind of combining all the things that people suggested, slowed down the lathe a little bit, uh, have a nice healthy feed rate, 21 thousandths. And um, yeah, got our tool post fixed, I think. So let's try it, see what happens.
well. That was something. So here's kind of the chips we're getting. They're very tight and I don't know, it's just a, it's a brutal sound. So we're getting a, I don't know, not a, not a fantastic finish. So I think what you're seeing there is the, um, kind of the, the, the closest section to where the shoulder is. That was under our last feed rate selection. So it's better than what we were doing before where it was tearing even worse. Um, sorry for the handheld movements, but anyway. Some of our, some of our chips, kind of what they look like. Seemed okay, but we'll bump up the feed. A few spots. Okay, this is 250 thousandths with a 21 thousandths feed rate. Down a, down a gear. Only gonna do it for a second, but I wanna show that it does in fact work. So there you go, that's 500 off the diameter of this 4140 steel. Finish is terrible and the chips look terrible, but no problemo. Well, that was certainly a learning experience, something I'd uh, never done before, taking big heavy cuts like this in a turning operation and had a little, uh, little bit of trouble on the way. So in case it wasn't clear earlier, the tool tool post was damaged, so the uh, connection between the stud and the nut uh, had failed, and so it was still holding on, but not well enough to be taking those big heavy cuts. So that's why it was, uh, the tool post was turning so badly. And as you can see, as soon as we got that fixed, it was running like no problem. So it's, it's interesting to um, troubleshoot through stuff like this and find out what's going on, maybe what needs to change. Uh, generally speaking, I've always been told and learned that if the chip isn't breaking, you need to feed it faster or increase the RPM of the machine. And in this case, a lot of suggestions were, nope, do the opposite, go a little bit slower and you might have better luck. Um, I'm not sure you know, where that would have been a better option in this progression of things if the tool post hadn't been broken, but it is something that I do have in my mind now. Um, for some of the comments, you guys were 
agitated about me doing things wrong and why, how do you not know this and blah, 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 blah. Guys, this channel is not instructional. I'm not here to tell you how to do it. I don't know how to do it a lot of times and I'm just learning and showing you how I'm learning, going through um, what troubleshooting stuff I come across and trying to figure out the best way to do things and a few times it's been instructive to somebody else and they've written me and said, hey, thanks for showing that because that helped me think of this. And it, it was a good thing for my shop or a good thing for something I was making. And that's really all I'm going for is uh, showing my progress as I learn new things and um, learn how to, to work in a machine shop. This is not me trying to teach you that I know all this stuff and I'm gonna explain it to you because I, I don't have the knowledge. I'm, I'm a first year apprentice basically, so I have no gospel to share with you and uh, the mistakes I make are mine and I try to do what's, what's, um, what's best and to do things safely and use the proper procedures for things, but that's not always going to happen. There's just no way. I don't have the, the background, the knowledge. I don't have uh, a journeyman a couple of steps away. I can go and ask him for something to, to help me um, figure something out. So. Um, just to, to reiterate that, I know it'll fall on deaf ears for a lot of folks that won't, won't see this particular segment, but that's the reality of this channel, is I'm not an instructor. There's really good YouTube channels out there that are instructors. So here's some of the chips that we have made along the way. Um, this one's interesting to me because it's a, a heavy cut and it's about three and a half feet long. Um, this is from the thumbnail of the failure video. So this this was, I think, when I very first started um, taking the heavy cuts. So it would not break there. And we've got a, a tight little straw here, um, some, some curlies. And then when it was finally all figured out, making these big honking um, 250 thou chips was no big deal. You know, I I didn't even get nervous about it before when things were going so badly and the tool was digging in, I was definitely nervous and um, tenant, you know, cautious about, man, do I really want to pull this lever? Things aren't going well. But once we got that figured out, it was like, yep, just run right along, make some chips. So that was interesting. I think I've got it out of my system now. Um, another note for everyone uh, that was concerned or, or made a comment about, well, why are you using such a big tool? Why are you taking such a big depth of cut? That's dumb, that's inefficient, blah, blah, blah. That's not the point. This is not an efficiency test. Um, if I had, you know, a 25 inch shaft and I had to, to turn off half of it from 10 inch diameter down to two inch diameter, then yeah, this would actually make sense to uh, dial this in and remove metal as fast as possible. And most of the things that I do, 100,000 steps of cut, depth of cut is probably gonna be just fine. Or 100 per side and 200 off the diameter is fine. Um, I use that big tool because you don't see it very much on YouTube. When people are showing their home shop machines, they're using kind of your standard, you know, CNMG 431 inserts. And I thought, hey, you know, it'd be fun is if I showed a 643 insert because no one's using those. Um, so it's not because it was cheap. It's not because um, it was really necessary to even take these big cuts because you can do it with a four seat insert, but um, because it was fun and it was something different and interesting to show. So anyway, that's uh, hope th hopefully that's not too much soapbox talking or whatever you want to call it for this video, but I just wanted to explain some things that have come up over and over again in videos. And if you're watching to the end of this, you're probably going to watch my next video. So um, you'll you'll realize what my intents are and uh, what I'm not trying to do. But uh, yeah, these um, each one of these chips is a uh, you know there's a lot of metal in each one of these. So it's, it is very interesting to see that compared to your normal size chip. Um, just doing something, uh, something heavy like that is what these big machines were made for. That's why Monarch made it is so that it could do this. Not that you had to do it all the time, but uh, when you did have a, a project that needed to pull metal off fast, even with an old high-speed tool, when that was the thing to use in the 50s, um, that machine could crank them off of there. So. Thanks for watching very much. Uh, we've got some other projects going on and I will get back out here as soon as I have time. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.
please comment if you've got something to say and hit the like button and um, subscribe if you haven't already. So all three of those things draw people to the channel, which means um, there's more views. I get a couple more pennies from YouTube and I have more motivation to come out here and spend my time talking to a camera and not my family. So thanks again. Have a good one.